There is something enticing, alluring about brands and developing brands, and it's a hell of a lot of fun too. It's safe to say then that the directors at Lion Capital have more than their fair share of fun. Lion is the private equity company set up by Lyndon Lee and Robert Darwin in 2004. In that time, Lion Capital's portfolio has included some of the world's best-known brands. Lyndon and Robert had worked previously in the retail and consumer space for an American private equity giant. Going it alone, they concentrated solely on building brands, resisting the lure of other sectors, and made a virtue of knowing more about less. It had to be something that was different in the marketplace at that point, and also was real, was sustainable in terms of giving us a competitive edge. And you know, we had a lot of experience um, in, in consumer, a lot of the deals we'd done had been in the consumer space. And so it was out of that that the idea of knowing more about less came to be. Once you got onto that strategy, there was only the consumer sector that we could focus on with any credibility. Part of the job that, that we've tried to do is establish the Lion brand itself and make sure that that's clearly well understood to the market and in the same way that any of the brands that we invest in need to have a clear purpose and a clear offering that they're delivering to their consumer, we need to do the same thing. This is where the Lion story begins with an audacious acquisition of the British breakfast cereal Weetabix. For a firm who were, were trying to establish themselves as specialists in consumer branded businesses, I don't think we could have wished for a better first opportunity than the Weetabix business. For, for anybody who's grown up in the UK, it was, you know, cradle to grave, you know, first and last food that you, <laughs> that you ate when you didn't necessarily have teeth. And so, People have grown up with that brand. They had identified a brand which I could categorize by saying was slowly sleepwalking towards the edge of a cliff. And they had seen the untapped potential in this brand. Lion grew the business by investing in product innovation. Mm. When they sold 60% of it to a Chinese company in 2012, it marked a huge return on investment. Fuel for big days. The Weetabix deal and Lion's subsequent successes in growing other brands has cemented its reputation. It's a track record that's underpinned by the strategy of knowing more about less, reassuring private equity advisors that Linden and Lion would be the perfect gatekeepers for those brands seeking investment. I think his uh, approach to um, the businesses he owns is much more industrial, I think, than uh, many private equity owners, and he's able to speak the same language as um, uh, the people in the industry, which allow, enables him to do a better job at selling himself than uh, private equity sometimes does. He's got a natural curiosity um, to figure global branding across different segments, but heavily specialized in consumer and retailing. They understand about brand innovation, they understand about brand relationships and the, and the roles that brands play in people's lives. It's a very, very different relationship than just someone who understands financials only. A case in point is American fashion label John Varvatos. Its founder was seeking a way out of his partnership with VF Corporation, the largest apparel company in the world. My main thing was to find someone who really believed in the brand, believed in the opportunity, um, and didn't want to make it into something that it really wasn't. We had been talking to a number of private equity firms who were very excited about our brand but all kind of came out of a cookie cutter mold in terms of the way they looked at that. They were less concerned about the brand and less concerned about the strategies than they were concerned about um, strictly what that EBITDA number was going to be and how we were going to get to that EBITDA number. And as I talked to Lion, I never really, the, the conversations were never zeroed in on that. They were zeroed in, your brand is X today, you're in a dinosaur company that is dinosaur from the fact that it's so big that it's difficult to move. You're part of that. You're now going to be independent. How can we change the dynamic in terms of, no one else talked to me like this. How can we change the dynamic and how we help you move forward, take the shackles off, feel like you can really grow, feel like you can rev that engine up. 
Lion succeeds precisely because it doesn't act like other private equity organizations. The wisdom of its investment in clothing retailer American Apparel was called into question when the brand hit the skids, but Lion refused to throw its charismatic founder and his business to the wolves. There were people that were saying, Lyndon, flush this investment down the toilet. Take your loss and run away. And he stood with me like this, and I'll never forget it. We ran into some very rocky, rocky territory. EBITDA went from, you know, generous and positive to negative. And now we're making it back again. We did it. We made it through this, this tunnel. Lion's faith in Charney has paid dividends, literally. Today, American Apparel is a $650 million sales business. It manufactures exclusively in downtown LA, eschewing the low-cost sweatshop labor that's a dark stain on the apparel industry. Lyndon was intrigued by this business model, and now he's gone a step further. Since 2009, he's been working with Not For Sale, a charity that intervenes in cases of human slavery, freeing men, women and children from the cycle of exploitation by helping them build a sustainable future. When Lyndon asked me on our first meeting, well, how is it you're going to actually overcome human trafficking, modern slavery? I said, well, frankly, we would have to be the apple of the social world. We would have to be as innovative, inventive. We would have to find the best talent. I would need the people who would otherwise work for Apple or Google or Facebook come and work for me. And I would need to raise the kind of funding that would actually be international and effective. And he goes, you're absolutely right, and I'm going to help you do that. I go back to the businesses in which we invest where I say, we're not the right guys to say just write us a check and we'll get on with it. We're not good at that. What we're good at doing is being your partner. And in the case of uh, Dave, it just matched up. It was a mirror image of what we do with our daily life in terms of our investments. All Saints was the first of Lion's businesses to throw its corporate weight behind the not-for-sale message. Here in Northern Thailand, All Saints has funded the foundation of an economically sustainable children's home for over 100 children rescued from exploitation. The plan is for more all over the world to follow. Private equity often has the reputation of brokering deals on the altar of mammon. Of course, Lion has a responsibility to its investors, but by placing equal emphasis on its relationships with business founders and management, it's able to gain critical insight into a business. And in this regard, there are no shortcuts. I'm really intrigued by um, a development in private equity over the last five or six years that a lot of the consultants espouse, you know? And consultants, you've got to love them. They can come into your business and in a matter of months give you a 100-day plan that tells you more about your business than you're supposed to know having operated it for a decade. And private equity firms too, you know, they come in and, and, and when people invest in private equity funds, they want to see what kind of due diligence they do. It takes me the first 100 days to even start to develop a good feel for what we have. We want to be successful in building brands. And building brands, you don't build them very quickly. It normally takes a period of time. You need to create a creative environment. On many occasions, successful brands are based on differentiation. Having a creative environment, a team spirit environment, uh, the right culture is critical for the development of brands. The one thing that all the businesses in Lion's portfolio have in common is potential for growth. When it comes to final decision making, Lion relies on a three-man investment committee. And the first question they ask is always, what is this company's growth potential? We look for businesses that have an enduring source of competitive advantage, a reason to exist and a reason to win. And whether that is a strong brand, a wonderful management team, a, some proprietary technology, um, but we need to have something that we, we believe means a business is going to prevail in the marketplace over a long period of time. And, and we look for something which is underexploited in the business. This strategy fits well first with Lion's investors, who are attracted to the idea of long-term value creation in the consumer space. Second, it fits well with Lion's exit strategy, Future strategic acquirers of businesses want brands that haven't had cash flows maximized, but are still growing and winning in their markets. 
And third, owners and managers are reassured that Lion wants to invest in their business. Bumblebee Foods is a producer of shelf-stable seafood and provides a further example of how Lion is committed to growing brands. We've had a number of private equity relationships who were very successful, but the operating model for those was always cut cost, increase efficiency, figure out how to turn the business in a very short period of time, and make as much money as we can. We'd seen what Lion had done with a number of brands already, Orangina, uh, Jimmy Choo's. Um, we looked at how long they'd been in brands like Weedabix, which showed their commitment, and that was something that we found extremely interesting and favorable. Lion walked in and really said, okay, you say you want to grow, what are you going to do? So they really kind of pushed the burden back on us to say, we're going to give you the resources to build the business. And in fact, they've done so. Today, Bumblebee is a $1 billion sales business. And like Weetabix, its success has come on the back of new product development that has changed the culture of the business. When Lyndon Lee and Robert Darwin founded Lion, their promise to each other was to make some money and have some fun. From the successes they've had in the last 10 years, investing in some of the best-known brands in the world, it's clear they're well on their way to achieving that goal.